Welcome to Safari Veterinary Care Centers. Today, we are addressing a serious condition in an 11-year-old dachshund. Over the past week, this pet has been getting progressively weaker. His right front leg has stopped working, his left front leg causes him to trip and stumble, and he can no longer jump up on the couch. We have performed a physical exam and found posture reaction deficits in both front legs and the right rear leg, suggesting a compressive lesion in the neck. To confirm our diagnosis, we're conducting a CT scan. The CT scan requires the pet to be under general anesthesia to remain completely still for crisp and diagnostic images. Once the pet is anesthetized, the staff exits the room while the CT is running, which takes only a few minutes. The computer then processes and renders the images, up to 1200 in a typical CT scan into a unified, reconstructed image of the area in question. Once the images start appearing on the screen, the technician loads them, applies the appropriate filter for the specific body part, and rotates them for optimal viewing angles. The doctor then examines the films and identifies an arch lesion compressing the spinal cord. The diagnosis is reviewed with the client, and we propose ventral slot decompressive surgery as the treatment. The client agrees to the surgical recommendation, and the pet is moved to the surgery table for preparation. The surgery is performed on the underside of the neck. The trachea and carotid arteries are reflected, and the muscles are separated. The exact location of the affected vertebrae is determined using a C-arm, a video x-ray that helps pinpoint the precise surgical site. The surgeon begins with a skin incision and muscle reflection. Although much of this is not visible on camera, we fast forward to another part of the surgery. A variety of instruments are used, starting with jello retractors to spread the tissue away from the surgical site. High magnification glasses help the surgeon visualize the tiny movements necessary for drilling and disc extraction. Once the exact location is identified, ringiers are used to remove the ventral portion of the disc. Periosteal elevators lift the muscle attachments from the ventral surface of the disc, and the entry point and direction of the slot are outlined. An electric drill with a small cutting burr creates a slot through the bottom part of the vertebra down to the spinal cord. This journey starts with the outer cortex of the bone, progresses through the marrow, and reaches the innermost cortex. Small curettes and bent instruments remove the disc material through the small hole. Throughout the drilling process, Pauses are taken to flush saline into the area and vacuum out bone bits and dust to maintain visibility. The goal is to reach underneath the spinal cord and relieve the pressure from the disc material. Once the disc material is removed, the surgical site is closed in a routine fashion. At Safari, we perform a postoperative CT scan to ensure successful decompression of the spinal cord. Any remnants of disc material are noted and evaluated for clinical significance. The three-dimensional view allows us to inspect the area as if looking through the spinal canal. The black area represents the spinal canal, and any remaining material is assessed. The image can be flipped to show the actual surgical hole made in the bone. The pet is carefully monitored by staff members as it recovers from anesthesia. Physical stimulation, like patting the body, helps awaken the pet faster. The endotracheal tube is not removed until the pet can swallow on its own. Thank you for joining us at Safari Veterinary Care Centers where we are dedicated to providing the highest level of care and expertise for our animal patients.